Okay, so what I've got in front of you now is I have a series of drawings that I did on site, in public, in transportation, in, in on buses and trains, or various places. And I'm just gonna show you how I build these drawings up. And you can see on this page right here, this is a preliminary sketch. So people are moving, right? They're, they're not sitting still, they're, they're moving around. So the part of them that might not be moving is the part I might stay on if the head is moving. And then when I'm ready to do the head, then I'll jump on the head. But I just want to get them in place. And so I might use a gray, like this is a, is a cool gray four. And I'm just, maybe I just knock in the basic shape like this. Somebody sitting kind of behind, they've got a little hoodie on them. And they're leaning down and they're reading. There's the cheek and there's the nose and there's gonna be glasses up there, the ears right here. So this just gets me set up so I can go to the next stage. And when I go to the next stage, maybe I'm just doing highlights on the hair. You know? Like that. So that's, that's, a, that's a, how I might introduce myself into a drawing. Occasionally I go straight for the line. So I have different techniques of how I open up different strategies. All right, you can see that I'm working with a variety of different grays. This is real important right here that I like to work with a variety of different nib sizes. So, and variety of different grays. So they're rich. Now I'm gonna show you what that looks like. This is a, what maybe I go out with something like that. I mean, it's a little white, heavily overloaded with the white right now, but this is gonna have some cool grays in it. Dark and light, it's gonna have some warm grays in it. Uh, I'm gonna have black in there, I've got white. I've got different nib sizes. And Faber Castell makes wallets, like this one right here. And this wallet has got su super fine, medium, and then the B stands for a brush nib. This was the original brush nib, the one that won me over on this tool, like that. It's slightly flexible, so. This is the guy that I used to do this dude right here. And I'm gonna build him up a little bit slower, like that. It's flexible, so if I need to then do some cal calligraphic writing, I can do the calligraphic writing with the thing. Just a great, great, great nib. And then, as I'm covering the, the areas that are large very quickly, I can work with this guy. So let's say he's, he's gonna have some tone underneath here on this part of his hair, like that, okay? I'll work on him in a minute, but I'm just kind of giving you an idea of all the different grays that I bring in to draw and how they work. Now you see my fingerprints even get involved in this gentleman where they're doing his five o'clock shadow. And his boom, right there. And if you're real fussy, you want to make sure that that's going the same way that the lines, the hair grows on his face. So for example, my fingerprints go like that. It actually makes more sense to do it like that. Okay, so you can see it rolling up on the cheek. And those got done fairly quickly. You know, or if I'm using a brush nib like that, it's just not gonna feel the same, right? So those marks are very descriptive now. Maybe, of course, if he's got a mustache, I can do the mustache and under here and work up into his hair. All right, this is basically how I go about drawing people in sight. Different grays, different nib sizes, do a preliminary quick sketch. Sometimes, other times go directly with a line. And this is just using a medium point nib. And then coming back in on top and building the tones on the scene. So these were drawn while I was listening to a lecture. And this is the lecturer. And these were the people in the audience lecturing. Uh, fingerprints on the, jack, on, the, on the denim. All right, so let's work on this guy. I'm gonna just start drawing on him and see what, this, what happens. Uh, I'm gonna use this guy. I'm gonna use the warm gray. I've got that. Maybe if I wanna go really dark, I've got a black. If I want to come back in and add some white, I can show you how I do that. And I'm going to use a 
brown nib right here. We also have a nib in this packet, which is the soft brushes. They vary from this guy just in the stiffness of them. So let's open this guy up and include one of the soft brushes and let's do it with a different color. So this one is the warm gray five. And here's the way that these guys behave. This is the normal brush. You can see it right there, the B. It's a little stiffer. I like that I can control that. I'm very, very comfortable with that guy. This is the soft one, comes to a little bit more sharp and, and, a, and more of a flexible nib. And you see that it's a little different the way it behaves. Like this. A little, see how much you can bend it? Pretty soft. So there'll be different ways to use it. All right, this is a 1.5. I got a 0.5. So right over here, I'm just gonna give you, right down here, I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm working with. All right, there's the black big brush. Here is a slightly cooler gray. This is the warm gray four. This is the cold gray four. This is the brush, the original brush nib. This is my soft brush. this brush and also in a cool gray. I have a 1.5 nib, which can go from that, with a little pressure, can go to there. And I have a 0.5. So with that, that many tools, if you went out the door with that many tools, plus your white, which you can come back on top and you can pop white in there. With something like that, you can really get a big variety of tones. And then with your paper having texture, as this texture is right here, when I wipe the page, this gentleman, you can give a coarse scanner, you can get something that's smooth. And this is an example of the overlap. So once it dries, and I come back on top of it, I'm creating paneling. I just come. And watch when I come back over, you're just depositing more pigment. So it's a great way um, to do a uh, gingham. I'm gonna do a buffalo gingham on a person's shirt. All right, so I'm just going to draw for a while now. from the initial opening sketch, which looked something like that, All right? Set my opening drawing. You can see my initial lines around this guy right here. And then as I feel confident that I've got a contour I like, I go up and I'll build it. And then I just keep layering. So let's say I wanna go back and, and, and do all of this stuff, I wanna hide that a little more. I just come back on top. And you notice again, if I'm going over fast, it's possible for me when it's still wet to get rid of those lines, for those of you who want to do that. But if you like that ribbing back there, you can leave it. So I'm just going to come back over here. And if you skip every other one, then it's definitely guaranteed to be dry. And so when you come back over, you see the ribbing. They're pressure sensitive, so if I press, it gets a little darker. All right. And the guy's got a nice little jug handle ponytail. And I'm going to come back over top of these guys. And again, even it's kind of a technique like this. If you start here, press hard and then go, it'll go from light, dark to light. So if I want to contrast between the background and, and his hair, and make him pop out of the background, I'm just going to press very hard and move it up. 
And then where his hair is like there, if I want a, a contrast between the background and his hair, I don't press so hard so that the hair is darker. I can come back and reinforce that contour. So it's in the shadow of the little knot like that. So those are the kind of drawing techniques where I can make him come out of the background. So his nose is, is uh, that little highlight on it there I left, a little bead. And now I'm banging back over top of there. I'm just giving a little more. And if he's sitting in a library reading in a book, I'm perfectly capable of capturing this guy in the less than time it takes him to read an article in a newspaper.